All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how the recently announced launches within Anthropic, the makers of Claude AI, is going to change everything. So this past week, Claude announced the release of their new computer use feature within their suite of tools, which allows your computer to basically take over for you. Now, what does that mean? That means that as we move forward, you'll now be able to, whether it's through written prompts or voice communication, have AI take multi-step actions on your behalf. And so within the memo that they put out, it states that we're introducing a groundbreaking new capability in public beta computer use. Developers can direct Claude to use computers the way people do by looking at a screen, moving a cursor, clicking buttons, and typing text. And then if you scroll down, it reads, instead of making specific tools to help Claude complete individual tasks, we're teaching it general computer skills, allowing it to use a wide range of standard tools and software programs designed for people. Developers can use this nascent capability to automate repetitive processes, build and test software, and conduct open-ended tasks like research. So the reason why this is so novel is because when you hear about this idea of AI agents and multi-step actions, this is the first time that we're going to see this really take place in a practical way. Claude also announced the launch of an upgraded version of Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is said to be a step up in terms of its coding abilities and also Claude 3.5 Haiku, which is a more affordable and comparable model and speed to the Claude 3 Opus, the uh, earlier Claude 3 Opus model. But today, what I wanna talk about is computer use. I wanna do a demonstration of it and speak more on why this is such a novel release by Claude. Now, the number of companies that seem to have already begun uh, testing this out in partnership with Claude. So you have companies here like uh, the productivity tool, Asana. You have the design tool, Canva. Uh, what also stands out to me is DoorDash and then Replit. And Replit actually uh, put out a template which you can use to run this computer use feature within the Replit development environment. And by Having this template, it means that you don't have to necessarily install the computer use locally on your computer. And given that it's still beta, it's still early, and the fact that you're giving this AI access to your computer, there are obviously concerns with sensitive information, not wanting for your private information to be potentially tampered with. Uh, and just the unknowns around using a tool like this. And so I definitely want to do a demo of it and give some insight on how this will likely progress over time. But when I was doing research on this computer use, it made me think about this tool that came out last year called Multi-On AI. And Multi-On AI is characterized as an AI agent that acts on your behalf. And it functions in a very similar way to what we're now seeing with this computer use tool. You could have it book you a flight. You could have a reserve time at a restaurant. Uh, you could have it find tweets and do research for you. And they have this AI, uh, this API called the Agent API. And so when I saw Claude's computer use uh, be announced, it made me think directly about Multion and their API and the kind of a work that you can do with it and what kind of puts something like the anthropic computer use above this other than having a stronger brand is the fact that it's also connected to the large language model and so any sort of conversational ai piece or generative ai piece that would be a, attached to your workflows the computer use is going to be able to integrate with that. So it's not just the fact that it's booking events or flights or taking these kinds of tasks off your hand as time goes on, but it's also performing actual work for you. Um, 
when you talk about the idea of automating operations, this is along the lines of what the future of AI and an agentic world looks like. So to get started, you open up the computer use on Replit. So we're in, we have the file open now and you're going to, first of all, go to secrets. So now secrets is where you'll connect the Anthropic API key uh, so that you can commu communicate with the LLM, which is uh, how this function of the web browsing is actually going to occur. And so I'd already put in my uh, API key. So this will actually come, come up blank when you first come here. You'll just press new key and then you'll title it Anthropic underscore API underscore key. And then I have to look at the actual API key. So for that, you'll go to the Anthropic website. You can go to the Anthropic console and Anthropic owners of Claude AI and where you're able to prompt with Claude. Um, on the back end, you can find the console and then you can get to the API keys from there. And so from the API keys, you can create an API key and um, then use, uh, I titled my computer, I think mine was computer use demo. And so once you have that API key, you're gonna come back to Replit and then paste that into uh, the Anthropic API key. And so then once you have that, you're ready to get going. I split my view, so I have my I have a web view right here, then I have the output right here. The way it's supposed to work is that you prompt on the web view, and then on the output is where the actual action is happening. Uh, but we'll see what, what occurs. So I'm gonna go ahead and click run. So I click run. Oh, you see, this, is, this has already come up. So uh, I had actually, tested this out earlier and I, I put find me the best restaurants in Philadelphia. What I'll do instead here, I'm going to say, can you go to youtube.com and identify the three top interviews from the 2024 president, uh, presidential election cycle. All right. So we'll see what it does. I'm going to prompt that. So now it says it's running the agent. Still getting, getting the restaurant material. All right. So now Okay, so you see it's navigated to YouTube. Override Firefox default colors for test, blah, blah, blah. All right, so you see it went to YouTube. See, I got no hands. No hands is doing its thing. Now it's typing in our right, 2024 presidential candidate interview. So it's pretty cool. Like it'll literally, it's literally, you know, taking taking control. So now we got a, we have an error here. So here's the first stumbling block. This action is restricted for safety reasons at this time. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to plug that into the chat box. And this is where, the you know the bugs come in now um, to where you'll get an error if uh, it's too many requests at the same time or if it's taking too many snapshots at the same time and then you know you may get errors for other reasons as well so I I, I typed that into the chat box if I stop and start it again all right so I stopped and started it again let's get uh, away from that screen all right so let's try let's let's try this again can you go to you and pull up the top three videos from the u.s presidential election cycle something let us do a thing so what it does is it takes a screenshot and then it'll look at the screenshot and make the decision based off of that and take another screenshot and make a decision so it went to youtube.com and you see no hands it's just doing this thing it's pulling up 24, uh, 2024 presidential election news, but it's timing out. So you see here, this is where it's kind of falling short. Let's say, can you do a search for the top three stocks of top three stock earnings of Q3? Let's see. What's so it takes a snapshot, posts it on the web view, and then makes it search based off of that. Okay. Top performing stocks, Q3, 2023 earnings. See, I got no hands. It's just doing this thing, it's typing it in top performing stocks. All right, so it looks like it got blocked from the website. Now it's going somewhere else. It's going to Yahoo Finance. I just just like you see, actually pulled up some information around this. So once to Yahoo Finance, let me combine the information from multiple sources to give you the top three stock earnings performers from Q3 2024. So pulled up Groupon, Tilray, US Cellular. Additionally, two stocks that received higher rankings from Zacks uh, Inc. And it's worth noting that energy stocks as a sector also perform well. If you'd like me to look up more specific details about any of these companies, Q4, uh, Q3 performers. So, and so what I'm seeing is that it went, it went to multiple sites and then it pulled from those different sites that it went to and then listed it out on this web view. And what I'm going to say next is, can you research what the feature guidance was for this dimension? Okay, I'll research feature guidance. 
I was going back to the typing it in, earnings, guidance. And then I'll see that's one qualm I have as well, so that it moves pretty slow, moves pretty slow. So it's like, this is work that you can actually do probably faster. But what I anticipate happening is as it, as this model continues to improve and there are fewer errors and there is no intervention that needs to happen to where you have to get it past the errors, I, as this grows up a little bit, then it'll be at a point where you can have it do something, you go away or you go do something else and then come back and the job will be done. And I feel like that is really getting to what um, the, the term agent or agentic uh, means, where it's not just a chain of modules or workflow, like it's, it's actually going off and doing a job or doing a function. So it pulled up the future guidance for all this. And it's crazy. I didn't even see where I was pulling from, but we see, saw how it browsed and then I pulled up the future guidance for the stocks that it mentioned. And so, I mean, there, there you have it. I mean, this is anthropic computer use. And so uh, this was like a very simple, straightforward example, of just like it's searching or doing some research for you on, on the search on the browser. But what I anticipate happening as we continue to go on the months into 2025, 2026, is that you'll be able to have it do actual specific functions in your companies, at your jobs. So let's say you are, um, we just give a research example of it, researching information. Um, what I anticipate though is that you'll be able to go off and say something like, go do research on a particular topic and write a blog post off of what the findings that you come up with and uh, have it be in a particular kind of tone or go and identify my ideal customer profile and uh, draft emails that are in there, uh, draft emails that are personalized to them and, and make an offer that they can't refuse. Analyze our financials for the past quarter and present it on an Excel spreadsheet with these particular kind of parameters. Provide me with your thoughts and let me know when it's done. And so that's what I, I see coming next, where you're able to give clear instructions. It goes off and does the job. It doesn't require you to string these modules together in order to get it done. Like it'll be into more intuitive like uh, like that. And and just thinking about the competition within these infrastructural AI companies, you know that OpenAI, Gemini, Llama, uh, XAI, all, all these larger companies for sure are going to have their uh, answer to, to this uh, because the implications are so much. And, and so, yeah, I mean, right now, super buggy. A super early isn't really so functional in an actual company for your business, but something like this really shows you the potential of where this can go. And it does have some use or some function, right? Like you, there are certain things that you could probably have it do that will be practical, right? You could have it go on Twitter and write tweets for you. You can have it do like simple uh, kind of functions right now. And that, that honestly, even a year ago, wouldn't have seen seemed so simple or having an and AI, you know, do it seems so simple. So yeah, uh, there, there's that. And we'll see what comes next from this. But the whole agentic concept is a narrative that I believe is going to continue to grow over the coming months. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll show one more thing. I was uh, looking at a post the other day on, on Twitter around AI agents and just the demand for it. Uh, as we go into 2025, Google Trends AI agents, agents, and so and so you see it. You know, over the past 12 months, it's gone up significantly. Um, its results going from 22 in November to now was this times four, times five, especially in the last week. And then you look at this over the past five years. You know, it's night and day. Uh, looks like a very bullish stock chart. So uh, this is where things are going. You know, AI agents, and we're gonna continue to hear more about them and, and continue to see these kinds of build outs and, and the impact that they have on our businesses and on our, on our lives. So something to definitely stay engaged with and to really like, you know, do your own research on and see how this fits into your own work or business 
or a life that you live. So if you like what I did here, definitely let me know if there's anything in particular that you'd want to see. If you want me to go further with maybe potential use cases, like current potential use cases. And uh, But otherwise, this is Anthropic's computer use and video on some of the latest updates from, from Anthropic.